Well, everybody knows Chip Foose, so I don't need to introduce you, do I? Well, not everybody. Okay. Uh, she didn't know the, the, the gal with the camera. She didn't know who you were. Well, she didn't know who I was when we met either. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so we have two females that didn't yes. know who you were. Yes. Okay, well, we're here today. We found two girls that have a life. Two girls that have a life. <laughs> They're not, they're not tied to cars. There we go. Okay, so we're here today cool. for the 90th okay. anniversary of the 32 Deuce. Yes. Okay, I was looking for Ken Gross, but then I saw you and I thought, what a perfect opportunity. Your career spans customizing these cars from way back when. I have customized quite a few 32s, yes. However, when you first started customizing, did you do them in this stock fashion, or were they always creations with different engines and stuff? Uh, well, a little bit of both. I grew up with my father, and we would do paint work and some work on 32s, but when I ended up going to work for Boyd, I was building one-off 32 Fords where we didn't use a stock body and modify it. I was designing and building something that resemble the 32 but it was completely hand shaped mm. now you're talking about the cars that date back to some of the ones that i'm familiar with that you built for my good friend and your client buzz the yes okay. we did a few cars with buzz with the lexus motor yes but that was a complete concept car that didn't look like a 32 in my mind but we built a few we had the boister the boister 2 and uh, we built many many 32s at boys but then after i left boys I built a car called the P32. I don't know if you're familiar with no, it or not. No. And the whole theme of that car was, what if in the late 1940s, a World War II fighter pilot missed his P40 Warbird and themed his roadster around that airplane. And I put a Lincoln Zephyr V12 flathead in it, and I made an exhaust that looks looks like the same exhaust tips of a P40, but a P40 exhaust tips about that tall right. in real life. Wait, is that a hot rod? About that I'll tall. put that in third yeah. It's really a fun little car that, you know, when you look at it, it's a hot rod, but it's got this airplane flare to it, which was really fun to build. Now, you had already left Boyd when you built that car? Yes. Or designed it? Yes. What was the era when you worked for Boyd? What was the time frame? I started working with Boyd in 1990. And his company went bankrupt in 98, and that's what forced me to start my own business. And who joined you first when you went out on your own? Steve Greninger was my first employee. We had worked together at Lloyd. And then when I moved from Orange to Huntington Beach to a bigger shop, I had virtually just about every employee that we ever worked with at Boyd coming and wanted to work with us. Why? And yes, and it, and it was quite flattering. But I, the greatest thing about it is I was able to handpick the guys that I really wanted. Right. And we built a phenomenal brand. The sad part is most of them have retired now. Because I was the young guy at Boyd. Right. And now I'm the old guy. And there's only one older guy than me. That's Pete, you know, Pete Morell. Right. Who's still there and we're still building cars today. We have been working together since 1990. What is your most successful design concept that was done by a company that hired you out like some of the big three or did you work for any italian companies at any time uh, well in the 80s i worked in santa barbara at a, at a company called sternberger Cane. it was a design company that became osha corporation and we designed for a lot of oems but all of that work has always been confidential i'm not allowed to tell you what we did but we did some really fun projects and then later, after Boyd, I worked with Ford Motor Company and Jay Mays. Right. And let's just say there was a lot of heritage design cars that I was involved with that group and just had an absolute blast working with Jay and the team at Ford. I was going to ask you about what you might have done as a special project with Ford. Is there, was, there, one, there was a few of them. Is there one special car that you got to do all by yourself that you designed and you just cherish to this day? Well, I can't say that I did it all by myself, but there were a few of them that I was... I built the first clay model prototypes, and then the team got involved and we would finish them. 
Okay. I know you're busy, so I'm going to ask one last question since Ken isn't here. What powers Ken's 32? Do you know? I believe he's got a flathead. Yeah, he has a flathead. Okay, so it's an original Ford flathead. Yes. And it's, I would probably guess it's around a 59-year-old And what else makes this car significant to have it invited to the well, I believe this is always Henry Ford. I don't know if this is a new car, but I, I believe everything here is original Henry Ford steel, and that this car would have some history to it. You see all the other cars, and they've got quite a great history to them. The one next to it was Gray Baskerville, who was the editor for Hot Rod Magazine for, I think, 35 well, years. Can the, the rest of the cars here in the line, you can see that. The 1930 Duesenberg J, Graver Cabriolet, owned by Sam. I don't know what you But I'm a man. 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 Ken Gross is one of the premier historians of all hot rodding and, and a lot of cars, so I'm not going to speak about Ken's car the way that he could. I know. Well, I'm looking for him. But I love his car, and Ken's a phenomenal guy. I know he's around here somewhere, and I wish you luck in finding him. Great to see you, Mike. And I'm coming back for my, my Schwinn bike.